2015 Tournament of Champions as we look at the exotic footwear of the illustrious Francis W. Stanwood. That was spectacular. This is Tina Ward. Bounce that one at the line. On lane seven. There, there we go. Is, I bet it a, is it a requirement to be a lob line judge? You must have exotic footwear or socks or... I don't know, but I can tell you Frank uh, takes it to a different level. Yeah. Francis, I should say. Yes. Nice. I would think he would need Argyle accompaniment to go with us. I told him to wear it, but wear them, I should say. But that's quite all right. I'm just glad that he's here. I'm glad that all of you out there in Candlepin Nation are tuning in for this first round matchup. Yeah. And the corner goes, so we're looking at 3-6 for a spare conversion. Notice so far today about how much Tina's ball is breaking. Of course, she throws a conventional right to left and put it down. This is Brian Fournier. He's our fifth seed. He threw a 102 in the first string. And he's looking at a single pin to pick up. This is the six pin. Uh-oh. That one got away. And he, you see the frustration etched on his face that time. Our expert statistician, Scott Moore, letting me know that both bowlers were 0, 0 for 4 on makeable spares. And 6.5, the average drop on that first ball. So even when they were off the head pin, they got a favorable count anyhow. Brian this time is through the middle. And that'll be an eight box. Tina's up on lane seven, looking to fill her spare from the second. One of the things is, you know, again, we talk about confidence in Brian's interview with that single pin with the plank. Is that something that's going to stay with him or is he make the adjustment? Here's the bonus. And a strike. I don't know if that's necessarily a question of adjustment. Like, you know where you want to throw it, just didn't do it. But, I mean, it would be, I think it would be more of a concern if he was missing the head pin. He just, hit, he just went two for two right. on the string. So... And maybe an adjustment isn't necessary. Tina's ready to load up on that strike on spare. Right here, there's a profile of here. First bonus ball. And look at that. Double strike. Wow. Three in a row for Tina. And oh. Brian comes back. Team triple. I can't color these triangles in fast enough. On the head pin that time, and he'll have the triangle to look at. Two, four, and five. And a little too thin. So he fills a spare with, or strike, excuse me, with nine. There we go. Ten box to put him at 47. It's a big ball coming right here. 
First ball, always the biggest on the double. Uh-oh, that looks good. Oh. Broke just at the last moment. And she's looking at the big five. Three, four, six, seven, ten. Oh, this looks good. Look at this. Look at Come on. Oh. Doesn't get much closer than that. No. What a try. From here, it looks like the, the pin was going to cut right over. I, I, thought so. I thought so. And she's all over that 10. An so, 85, um, 84 half. Right. Impressive. Don't take her lightly. Oh, no. Not whatsoever. Full that, horseman right. That was such a, a perfect cut. I, I don't know how that got by the head pin. I, Funny things happen. Yes, absolutely. In completed boxes, uh, Tina has a 20 pin lead. just slid by that time, so 93 after 6. Uh, I'm sure she's very disappointed. <laughs> you talking about her or Brian? <laughs> Brian certainly has his work cut out for him here. That's true. It looked like a better ball than that. Well, the good news is he hasn't missed the head pin yet this string, so it's, things are going to start happening for him if he stays on it, so. Two, four, five, ten. He went one, three that time in the pocket and tried to cut it over, but the five and the ten still remain. And score that at nine. That'll give Brian a 56 half. Big oh, hit and another big strike. Three marks, all strikes so far in this first round matchup for Brian Fournier. And that'll cut into Tina's lead because he's opposite and open on that one. It's going to take a little bit of the pressure off of him, I think. Right. Brooklyn this time. And Tina will have a single pin to pick up. This is the six pin. She's throwing a nice ball right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. It's almost as though she can't do anything wrong. She's all over this one. Fourth mark to string for Tina. She's moving right along on a very good string. This could turn into a big number real quick if she fills this with a double. I mean, with a strike, I'm sorry. Right. Light hit. And we're looking at five. Very makeable five, though. True. I mean, it's good to have that piece of wood again Absolutely. between the six and ten as she is three, five, six, nine, and ten. Looks like she'll be on the off. Oh, she was heavy. And score that a nine. 117 after eight. Brian's working on a strike, looking to load up here with the first bonus ball. And through the middle.
Ball seemed to break just at the last moment to make it heavy on the head pin here. Look at this. Oh, oh yes. makes it. Nice shot. Tremendous shot that time to cut over the big five leave. He's opposite of mark five here, so he's going to want to load up here with a big count and get another one. And he drops seven. Look at the triangle with no help. Two, four, and five. Lead down to eight. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Wow. That was a little unusual. That, that would have been a great conversion on that. <laughs> not exactly how you draw it up. No, not at all. Uh, that'll be a nine. 102 after eight. Eight pin match. Tina wants to finish strong here, going into the third string. Along with Rich Lamoni and Frank DeLuca, Scott Moore, the illustrious Francis W. Stanwood. I'm Kyle Bruce. And that's Tina Ward with another single pin to pick up. This is the seven. Put it down. Two for two on singles so far. Those are the ones you need to make in a head-to-head -head match. That's for, In any match, it doesn't have to be head-to-head. -head. In team matches, too, you, you need to make your singles. Right. It's an 11-inch target. Sometimes it can be intimidating. And, and uh, yes! Strike machine. 147 plus two bonus balls here. I'm speechless. This is fantastic bowling. Just took a little bit to, like I said before, work out those cobwebs. We started a little late today, so sure. <laughs> sometimes what okay. happens is, you know, you get cold and Takes a bit to warm up, but just needs an icebreaker. That's all. And uh, look yep. what we have now. Right. Yeah, I mean, our conversation is much improved from the first string. Yes. <laughs> well, certainly between me and Frank. I don't know about you. Oh. But, uh. <laughs> well, I mean, we needed to get the ball rolling. Talking about uh, the illustrious Francis Stanwood oh, wow. shoes. Stan Stanwood. Yes. I say Stanwood every time. Uh, that's he okay. must get mad at me for that. An unusual, uh, there was no mix on that, on that second uh, bonus ball for Tina, but she has a 151 for her second string, so she's moving right along. Ooh, oh, right around wow. the seven. Nice bid. Ten box. Eighteen the difference. Obviously you'll need a mark to make it single digits here. Closing out the second string. And he gets the ten to go out, so four horsemen left for the number five seed. little heavy that time. So Brian will be open. But he ends the second string with a 10 box, 122, and a 22 pin advantage for Tina Ward going into the third and final string of our first round matchup, the 2015 Classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions. We'll be back to give you that third string right after this timeout. <laughs> 